and I mean that in every sense of the word. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot. And this is the first weekend of September. It is the long Labor Day weekend. Hope you're enjoying yourself. Now, what we like to do on this show is focus in on hot OTC and penny stocks. Or, in other words, we're looking at stocks under five bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. Now, I bet the stocks I share with you by looking at the charts first. That's my primary focus. I want a chart that shows heat, temptation. It looks like it's ready to break out. What makes it look like that? Oh, maybe a lot of volume coming in, getting more and more and more. Maybe there is the price sneaking up under a strong SMA, looking like it's about ready to break out. Something that makes the chart look tempting. Then I go rummaging around through the press releases and the filings, looking for a match to set that chart on fire. Well, last weekend I shared some stocks with you that were not based on their charts. They were based on being in a hot sector, artificial intelligence. Well, we're doing the same thing this weekend. We're looking at a hot sector that has not been hot for a very long time, the cannabis sector. However, I'm expecting, and I think most people are expecting, you can see by the charts, that there's going to be an imminent explosion here, folks. This is the mother of all catalysts that we have been waiting for, for the cannabis sector. On August 29th, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, the HHS, asked the Drug Enforcement Administration, the DEA, to reschedule marijuana. The DEA has the final say on marijuana. Now, we're not talking hemp, we're not talking CBDs, we're talking let's get high. THC, whether it comes in smokables or vapes, uh, edibles, whatever it is, if it gets you high, that is federally mandated as a Schedule One drug, equivalent to heroin. It means it is absolutely worthless and dangerous. And for how many years have we been selling marijuana openly in cities everywhere? Most of the states are legal now. A very long time. So it's about time we change it. Not to mention all of the benefits that are going to come to the companies. Now, folks, this is going to affect America primarily but it is going to help the overall market around the world because this is going to allow us to import and export. This is going to allow us to work with our neighbors in Mexico and Canada, which we have not been able to do. We've been this huge island doing about $26 billion a year, and every state is its own island. What grows in California stays in California. You can't send it to Michigan. You can't send Michigans over to Illinois. No, everybody's got to hang on to their own marijuana. What this is also going to change is the bottom line for these cannabis companies. Being federally illegal, they have had to build their sector up in very creative, serious ways. Unlike any other sector, they have been fighting headwinds all along the way. From nothing to, like I said, $26 billion in this country. They have not got banking. They cannot put any of their money in the bank. So that $26 billion we're talking about, it's out there somewhere. But it's not in the banks. It can't be loaned. It can't be spent. And it's hiding underneath pillows or in storage lockers. Breaking bad. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> right. That's a lot of bloody money. Plus, they can't get loans. How many companies do you know of that are successful that did it without any loans? No, they've had to get big investors. That's the only way they've been able to survive is using their shares and using it as currency. Not to mention they don't get any tax deductions. Now imagine that. How much does it cost to build these greenhouses, which they have to build in every single state in America, if they're going to operate in Florida, Michigan, California? Yeah. It, any company has to build brick and mortar operations. You got to put up your gas stations, your stores, no doubt about that. But they had to build growing facilities. Now imagine Coca-Cola having to put out factories in every single state that they were going to sell Coca-Cola in. No, they put one on the East Coast, they put one on the West Coast, and they cover the country. This is how you do it. You streamline your business. And these companies have had to spend a lot more money than most companies. Well, now they're going to get tax deductions. They're going to be able to pull all that money that they've been spending, deduct it, and change their bottom line. These companies are going to be in big, big profits. It's going to pull everything up. Everything is going to change. They're going to be able to do synergy now. 
all those states are going to now be able to work together. Cannabis will be able to cross borders, leave the country. We can sell it to Germany, sell it to Australia. We'll be, this is what we've been waiting for, folks. So I want to talk to you about the cannabis sector, and I pulled a few stocks that I want to share with you. However, we just don't have enough time to go through them all. I did too much research. I found six hot cannabis stocks that caught my attention. They are undervalued. They've got low prices on the charts. They've had impressive highs in the past. Problem is we just don't have enough time. I'd have to make a part one and a part two, and they wouldn't be videos, they'd be movies. And for the sake of knowing, just a free plug here, I've got a Facebook page that I started back in 2018. And from that time till now, I have updated this page continuously all the way along the way. And I like to put my information together. One post from 2022 may have 30 posts in it, one after another, chronologically showing you everything that's happened. So if you want to catch up on penny stock, well, any uh, <laughs> pot stock, hemp stock, cannabis stock, any of those, I put as much information on there as I can, along with others as well. That is Penny Pot Stocks on Facebook. Lots of information there, folks. I'm the guy that approves. Just answer a couple questions and I'll let you in. So we're going to look at the top three together, and then you can check out the bottom three on your own time. We've got Tilt Holdings here, ticker TLLTF, Canopy Growth, ticker CGC, and Forefront, ticker FFNTF. Now, the strange thing here is all of these companies are Canadian cannabis companies. Now, why would I be showing you Canadian cannabis companies when we're talking about U.S. laws being changed? Well, because they're selling here in America. But more importantly, the American charts aren't moving yet. I don't know why. I did go looking for American companies, but the charts are cold and stale. The Canadian companies, since the buzz came out, they've all been moving. The last three trading days, they have been climbing. That's why we're looking at them. But don't turn your back on the American companies. Once this news comes out, I expect a ton of companies to be running. So we are going to take a look at the top three. We have got Tilray, Curaleaf, and Ianthus. Tilray, ticker T-L-R-Y, could be the largest cannabis company in the world. They have got a huge footprint. She is on the NASDAQ. She is a Canadian company selling here in the USA and abroad. Outstanding share count for Tilray is 580 million shares. And the revenue at the end of 2022 was $627 million. Another huge cannabis company is Curaleaf. Maybe this is the largest cannabis company in the world. This is ticker C-U-R-L-F only on the OTC, but they're on the best tier, the QX. Canadian company selling here in the USA and around the world. Her outstanding share count is 631 million shares. And look at her revenues. At the end of 2022, almost doubling Tilray's $1.3 million. So which is the bigger company? Tilray or Curaleaf? Tilray's got a lot more of the earth covered, but Curaleaf's making a lot more money. Then we've got a smaller but successful cannabis company, Ianthus. Ticker I-T-H-U-F. She is on the pink tier. She is also a Canadian company working in the USA. Got way too many shares. $6.4 billion. Now we have to take concern with that because sooner or later, they're most likely going to do a reverse split. But are they going to do it in the next 30 days? Which is when I expect this DEA news to come out. Honestly, I don't think this is going to take a long time. If they're going to do it, they're going to do it. There's not a lot of ham-haw and bureaucracy red tape to deal with. So, I would think that this DEA news is going to come out way before any news comes out about a reverse split. So I wouldn't be worried about that with Ianthus. And her revenues at the end of 2022 were $163 million. Now let's get some information on each one of these companies, starting with Tilray. Now there's no arguing the fact that Tilray is probably one of the largest cannabis companies in the world. Maybe the largest. Not too long ago, they did a deal with Afria. They merged with them. Afria was probably one of the top five major cannabis companies in the world. Tilray and Afria merged together. 
So now everybody sees them as the largest cannabis company in the world. Tilray isn't just working with flour, vapes, and edibles in the cannabis arena. They have beverages, THC, CBD, and such. But they've also got craft brewery beers. A while ago, they broke off and bought a company called Sweetwaters. And here recently, they've made a lot of deals. And it looks like they are breaking into the craft brewery market in a big way. I think they now have 5% of all the market share in America. So they tell us here that Tilray supplies medical cannabis products to patients, physicians, hospitals, pharmacies, researchers, and governments in Canada, the United States, Europe, Australia, and Latin America. Tilray is a pioneer in cannabis research, cultivation, and distribution. All of the companies we're looking at are vertical. That means they do everything from seed to shelf. They plant it, they grow it, they harvest it, they cultivate it, they uh, put it into packages, they ship it, they put it on the shelves, they sell it to you. They take care of everything. Tilray Brands have an unprecedented production platform that supports over 20 different brands in over 20 countries, including a comprehensive list of various cannabis products, hemp-based foods, and craft beverages. Now, taking a look at some of these deals they've been making here. Tilray Brands announced its closing of transaction with Hexo. Now, maybe you've heard of Hexo. It used to be on the exchange. It used to be sold. People were investing in it. They had some big debt and disappeared. Well, it looks like Tilray has bought Hexo for basically that debt. So they got themselves another nice big company. Tilray Brands on August 18th announced acquisition of Trust Beverages. I don't know how long ago it was, but Molson Coors did a deal with Tilray. It was almost a 50-50 split with the largest percentage going to Molson Coors. And they created this beverage called Trust Beverages, which were THC and CBD infused beverages. And they were selling them like they were selling Coors beer just in Colorado for the United States. But I do believe they were being sold in Canada as well. Well, Coors isn't happy with the way it's going. It's not moving as fast as they thought it would. So Tilray has bought them out and now they own the entire company of Trust. And they can now push this product as hard as they want. Another very large deal here, not to be overlooked. This was on August 7th. The company announces agreement to acquire eight beer and beverage brands from Anheuser-Busch fueling Tilray's future in U.S. craft beer industry. This acquisition is expected to position Tilray as the fifth largest craft brew brewery in the United States with a 5% craft beer market share already. Now, I was in California, and the time I was there, craft breweries were popping up like weeds on a spring lawn. Then I moved back here to Michigan. We got a bunch of craft breweries already built here. But you know what? None of them really have any distribution set up, so they're only doing business very locally. This company, I'm not talking Anheuser-Busch, I'm talking Tilray, has got a distribution set up. So they're going to do much better with these products than they did. So let's go take a look at Tilray's chart. She is looking good. She is at a low. And let me show you what her high was about three years ago. We're looking at a one-week five-year chart for ticker TLRY, Tilray Brands. And we're going to do all the charting on these stocks on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. I got this when I signed up with TD Ameritrade. And that didn't cost me anything either. So our high bubble was all the way back in September of 2018, $300. That is a legitimate price. I was there. I remember when it hit it. Why? I don't remember why, but I can assure you this. She didn't have near as much as she's got right now. They hit another nice high here, February 2021 of $67. And then we hit a low just this past June of $1.50. Looking at our six month, four hour view. Five months ago, we had a high of $3.59. Hard downtrend down to that $1.50 in June. Just worked away towards the 200, but once she got there, she ignited like a rocket pushing from $1.66 up to $2.34 before she pulled back, 
bouncing off the 50-day SMA and launching again up here to $3.14. She fell but came right back up to that $3.14. She's pulled back a little bit on Friday and right now she's like at $2.99. Now, our 200-day SMA definitely shows we've had a change of trend. She is not falling anymore. You can also see our volume has been growing. She cools off in between spikes, but each one of these spikes are getting bigger and bigger. How big do you think it'll be when the DEA comes out with an announcement they change the scheduling of cannabis? <laughs> Oscillators have been very strong, but because of Friday's pullback, you got to expect them to be looking a little bit cooler as they do. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. Not a bad chart, actually. We've got some rips and dips in there, but we got a low of this corner of $2.16 and a high in this corner of $3.16. And she started above the 200, and she is above the 200 now. She's looking fine. All of our SMAs look perfect. They are all lined up right next to each other. And you can see the last three days is when the volume's been coming in. Oscillators have been very strong, but obviously Friday cooled everything off on the oscillators. Five day, five minute. Again, not a bad chart. Low bubble in this corner of 228. There's our 316. She's staying above the 200, bouncing on it. Now here she has just come underneath and it looks like she's trying to get back up. Oscillators say she is working on a recovery right now, but Let's be honest, we're not talking about a surge tomorrow, well, Tuesday, or even this week, or maybe even this month, though it very well could be, because when the DEA makes a decision, it's going to be like that. There's not going to be any of this red tape, taking two or three months, getting a bunch of people together to vote. We don't have to do that. It's going to be them making a decision and passing it. And when that comes out, this is going to take off, and that's why we're looking at Tilray one of the largest, if not the largest, cannabis company in the world at $3 right now. Folks, if you're not looking at it, you're just definitely not interested in cannabis. We're now taking a look at Cureleaf, which is <laughs> arguably the largest cannabis company in the world. So which is it, Tilray or Cureleaf? Well, Tilray, I think, has a bigger footprint. They're in more places, but Cureleaf is making a lot more money. So which do you think is bigger? Cureleaf Holdings is an MSO, a multi-state operator. They're in 19 states with 28 cultivation sites, 152 retail locations, and 1,005 wholesale partner accounts nationwide. At the beginning of 2023, the company announced its plans to close operations in California, Colorado, and Oregon in an aggressive effort to cut costs. They are streamlining, and it is working, folks. Their revenues are growing. Their expenses are going down. Cureleaf is arguably the largest cannabis company in the world, not just the USA. In recent years, Cureleaf has invested heavily into the European market. The company's recent quarterly revenues were nearly $340 million, displaying year-over-year -year gains. And as you can see right there, their revenues have been growing year-over-year -year in a huge way, starting in 2019 at only $221 million, and now at the end of 2022, they are at $1.3 billion. And take note that there are no negative numbers on that chart. It is all going strong for them. Now, the company hasn't got a lot of what you would call current news, but they've done a lot. They've built themselves up. They're just doing business as normal. Now, with regards to this DEA decision, the CEO, Matt Darren, says, we think this is going to be a massive catalyst. The biggest impact from a financial standpoint, which is what I keep saying, will be the removal of the Drakian 280E section of the tax code that has really become unattainable for our regulated industry. And that's what I'm talking about, folks. The amount of money, I mean, I would be upset if I didn't get tax deductions. I count on those tax deductions, especially when I was running my business. That is how I kept a profit, was by finding as many deductions as I could. Now, one of their most recent pieces of news came out here July 5th. Cureleaf to acquire Portuguese Cannabis Facility. 
This is coming from Cleaver Leaves. This is another cannabis company that is on the exchange. They've made a deal with them, and that's what these companies just keep doing. They keep making deals and strategically building themselves. They've learned a lot through these last few years. So let's go take a look at the chart for Cureleaf, ticker C-U-R-L, and the F. Don't forget the F, C-U-R-L-F. We're not in Canada, we're in America. So this is Cureleaf Holdings, ticker C-U-R-L-F. We are looking at a five-year, one-week chart. We've got our high here at a very strange time. It is February of 2021, the stimulus month. She hit a high of $18.38. The strange thing is, it is February 7th, yeah, February 1st to February 7th is when she hit her high and then fell. Well, that's when the stimulus month was beginning. She ran all month to new highs on a lot of stocks. Not this one. As soon as the, the run started, she started dropping. And she dropped all the way to a low here of $2.19, which she hit at the very start of May. Now, looking at the six-month, four-hour view. Six months ago, we were at a high of $5.36 with a very strong downtrend to that $2.19 May 1st. Off of that, she jumped up onto the 50. You can see she rolled that 50 nice and smooth to the 200 and like Tilray, once she got to the 200, struck, struck that match, psh, we have ignition, we have launch. And I know that looks like a small bounce, but it isn't. It jumped here from $2.90 up to basically $4.30. That is a nice bounce. She did come back down under the 200 and she has rolled around these last three days. The only time we've had any trading with the news that the DEA is thinking about this and she's been running just with the buzz. What do you think she'll do when the actual news press comes out? She's gotten over that 200, riding on that nine day SMA, climbing steady. Our oscillators are outstanding, very strong. PPO is pushing to the moon just like our MACD. You read both of these the same. Lots of green bars, but we do have a little bit of pullback here, which our RSI verifies. She has come down from the overbought of 74 down to about 67, which is still nice and hot on the RSI. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. 20 days ago, we were at the 200. She took a dip down to that low of 257 jumped up to the 50. You can tell that's where she wanted to be because she stayed there for about a week. Fell down to our 200 haul like a cat getting ready to pounce. It crouched and then jumped. Boom! Three days running there, only on the buzz. Floating on the nine day with some pullback at the end of Friday. She's probably going to come back down to this 20 day. Oscillators were very strong, but as you can see, they are cooling off rightfully so. Five day, five minute. So she was laying on that 200 five days ago, took that dip and then took a rip going from 263 up to 335, kept most of the gains, went sideways, waiting patiently, biding time, waiting for that 50 day SMA. However, it could be the 20. Looks like she may have actually only hit the 20 and not the 50. Took another rip. Went sideways waiting. Obviously, it wasn't the 20 because she didn't bounce on it. Here's the 50. She's hanging around the 50, bouncing on that one. Oh, now we're real close to the 200. She's dropped down to the 200. And our oscillators say she's in the midst of a turnaround. She's trying to recover right now. Look at our RSI. Coming from 22 all the way up to 43. So she is in the midst of getting back on top of that 200-day SMA and probably taking off. But as I said, for Tilray goes for all of these cannabis stocks. We're not looking at them for a run tomorrow or the next day. They may, they may continue running on this DEA news, especially if there's a lot of talk out there and buzz about it, which it is the biggest catalyst in the cannabis industry, which will affect all the cannabis markets because they'll now be able to do business with America and we'll be able to do business with them. And you know how we like to spend our money. So I'm thinking C-U-R-L-F belongs right next to Tilray on your watch list, folks. This is only at $3.84. And though she says she was only at $18, I get the feeling with the revenue she's making now that she is going to run when this sort of news breaks free. Our next cannabis company, 
doesn't even compare to Cureleaf and Tilray. Hasn't got the revenues of Cureleaf and doesn't have the footprint of Tilray. However, on their own terms, they are a successful cannabis company, just a lot smaller. And the price reflects it. She's at a great buy price right now. The company's got everything they need. They're in multiple states. They've got their brands. They've got their facilities. They're making steady revenues. Ianthus Capital Holdings owns and operates a vertical best-in-class licensed cannabis cultivation processing and dispensary facilities throughout the United States with a presence currently in 11 states, including the two new hot states that everybody wants to be in, New York and New Jersey. They're also in Massachusetts, Florida, Maryland, Arizona, and Nevada. The company has built one of the largest indoor cultivation facilities in the country and serves over 2,300 retail locations nationally. That's a lot of locations, 2,300 places your stuff is being sold in. Now, speaking of a lot, they've got a lot of cultivation space. Remember, I told you, every state you sell cannabis in, you have to grow marijuana there. So it's not like they have one huge place that they grow their marijuana in. They've got 11 of them at least right now. Also, they've got about 12 different brands and they pander to all the different price ranges. You got the people that want the best and aren't worried about the price. That's your premium brand. You got your mid-grade, which is where you're probably selling most of your stuff. And then you got your value package, you know, your white labels for the stuff who can barely afford to get their cigarettes, let alone their herb. Now the company's revenues, they have taken a dip this last year. If you look at it quarter over quarter, they are starting to gain again. Their revenues were $38.7 million. This is their quarter over quarter growth. They are growing quarter over quarter uh, at 5.2%. And their gross profits are up at 18.5% quarter over quarter. But as I said, they have dropped year over year. But the revenues are strong and they're steady and positive. And that's what really matters here. So the company is doing a lot. They've got 11 states they're working in. They're growing their own stuff. They've got their own brands. They've got their own products. They're making revenues. All we need is a real serious catalyst to give them a push. And I think this announcement from the DEA is all we're looking for. Let's go take a look at the chart. Once again, we are looking at a one-week, five-year chart for ticker ITHUF, Ianthus Capital Holdings. It was September of 2018. Again, we had a high of $7.27, and she's been falling ever since then, hitting a low of 0085 June of this year. Six months ago, we had a high of six and a half cents. She was well underneath the 200-day SMA, and we had an atypical breakout here, but it didn't stay up. She jumped here from about a penny and a half up to three cents that was a hundred percent rip she came down ripped again came down ripped again and that was it she got under the 200 hitting this low and she's been banging her head up underneath that 200 all this time but she hasn't gotten anywhere until the last three days right when everybody's been hearing the buzz about the dea the volume is starting to grow you can see here it is starting to pick up. We have broke through our 200. We did have a pullback, the first breakthrough here, but she is starting to bounce and she's on her nine day SMA. Things are looking strong here. Osculators are in agreement. Thank you very much. Our PPO is going to the moon just like our MACD is. And our RSI is up at 61 right now. 20 day, one hour view. Not a lot going on. She was going sideways until those last three days. That's it. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Actually, it looks like Tuesday she started off. She was just barely over a penny, and then she hit uh, just barely under two cents. Almost 100% gain in just those few days right there. Look at our SMAs, folks. They are looking great. Look like a nice fork, right? And all of them are crossing our 200-day SMA. When they cross, they become golden crosses. The 20 is a little golden cross. You get a push on the price. The 50, when it crosses, gives a big burst of air. You get another big push. So everything is looking nice here. Osculators are still in great condition. PPO and MACD are pushing up with just a wee bit of pullback because of the pullback there at the end of the day. Our RSI is now down at 57. 
We don't want to see it any lower than 55. That's as low as I like to see it. Five day, five minute. So there's your low bubble, just barely over a penny. She pushed herself up over that 200. She's been bouncing off of it, barely. More like the 20, not really the 50. She's bouncing off of the 20 here. And she's coming down to the 20 right now. Things look like she's climbing. Oh, we got a 200-day SMA that just came into the picture. In a lot of cases, you will see the price gravitate to the new SMA. And it doesn't matter where it is on the board. It could be above the price, below the price. You just see the price go to it. Sometimes it sticks there. Sometimes it just tags it and goes back to whatever it was it was doing. Now, this has been uh, a full day, and it hasn't moved towards it yet. So maybe she'll continue her nice little climb right now. Oscillators, well, they're climbing very slowly, but they're showing signs of cooling off right now. We've got a negative crossover on our MACD. But do I need to say this one more time? <laughs> We're not looking for a run tomorrow. I mean, that's great if they do. Take your gains if you want them. You can always get back in if she dips. If she does it, well, I'm expecting more than just a bounce. If the DEA's announcement comes out that they're approving the rescheduling of cannabis, we are not talking bounces. We're talking rocket stocks here, folks. And there's going to be a lot of them. I'm not going to lie. The ones I'm showing you right now, this is just a wee handful. A couple grains of sand off the beach. There are literally a thousand companies out there, and I will bet you more than half of them run. Now, I want you to think about this. A lot of those stocks are on the OTC market. The OTC market has very, very low volume. It is just tremendously low. We're down at like one, two, three billion shares a day when our normal is 70 billion shares a day. We need a kickstart. Everybody's gotten out of the market, especially the OTC, because it's been falling for so long. Inflation's going up. People don't have money to gamble with. But you get 500 stocks running in one day. They're all running two days, three days. That's going to bring money in. That's going to bring investors in. Hopefully, that'll be a prime kickstart to the OTC. I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again. Cross our fingers, it works. DEA announcement, it's good for everybody. Outside of doing a happy dance in the nude, how do I express my excitement? <laughs> this is excellent, folks. This is the biggest news. This is the mother of all catalysts in the cannabis industry. I've been in it since 2018, and we kept thinking, soon, soon, soon. Well, if we were waiting on the government to make an agreeable decision, it was never going to happen. But you give one office the decision, the DEA, I think it's very likely going to happen. And this is going to explode the cannabis industry, not just in America, but around the world. We're now going to be opening our doors to do business, not just to export, which is going to be good for us, but importing as well. You and me, the consumers, are going to get lots of goodies from around the world. Now, the biggest benefit here, obviously, is the banking. Not just because of the loans they can get, which are going to help them grow and survive, but they're going to get the related tax benefits. Tax deductions. How much tax deductions do you think there are in a billion-dollar corporation? Well, they don't get to deduct anything every year. Folks, this is where my profit margin comes from in my business. The more deductions I make, the bigger profits I make. So it's very, very important. So when all of these companies all of a sudden at the same time get the same rights to tax deductions and they get to change all their books and take all their investments out, what do you think the profit margins are going to be? They're going to come way, way, way up. Even if the revenues don't grow, the profit margins are going to get huge. Folks, they're going to launch when this decision comes out. And if you try to get in that day or the day after, good luck. You're catching rockets. And I honestly think we could see the OTC market wake up. With over a 1,000 cannabis stocks out there and me thinking at least 50% of them are going to run. And honestly, I think they're all going to run. Why not? They're all on the same body of water. Every cannabis company will be affected by this one way or another, directly or indirectly. So when the water rises, all vessels on the water rise with it, small or big. So I think this is going to impact the entire cannabis industry, but especially the ones working here in the U.S., whether they're Canadian companies or U.S. Now, there wasn't a lot to look at for the U.S. right now. 
but <laughs> they're going to be the direct beneficiaries. They've got MSOs, multiple states they're working with, synergies they're going to be able to create. Folks, there is nothing bigger in any sector than what we've got going on right now in the cannabis sector. Do your homework. I know there's a lot out there, but you've got to look now. I don't expect this decision is going to take too long. Remember, folks, the more you know, <laughs> the more you're going to grow. See ya.